So it seems like I found myself a little niche on booktube and that is sapphic books. Whenever I make a video where I talk about just queer books in general but like specifically sapphic books that's seeming to get loads more views than anything else I'm filming and that's amazing because this channel only has like a couple of thousand subscribers I'm not doing this channel for the views I'm doing it so we can nerd out about books together but I love that you guys love hearing about sapphic books from me because spoiler alert that is pretty much all I'm reading nowadays. So I've seen people all over YouTube making these like specific book recommendation videos and I wanted to jump on that bandwagon but specifically with queer books. So I asked on Instagram, I said, tell me what queer book vibe you're looking for and I will recommend you something. And honestly, I wasn't expecting that many people to answer because like that is very specific, isn't it? Loads of people came forward. So we're gonna zoom through as many of these as we can. I'm gonna recommend you some sapphic books or queer books, but most of these like requests are specifically for sapphic books. There's a few queer ones, mostly sapphic. <laughs> so the first one is sapphic romance recs that have a bit of spice, not loads, just a sprinkle. I haven't actually really thought about this going into this. Like I had a very brief look at what the requests were, but I haven't really put much thought into it. So, okay. What are we gonna go for? Okay, this might be very niche and very strange, but we're gonna go for Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. This is a Christmas sapphic rom-com, so maybe it's not the best thing to be recommending in August, but wait till Christmas, you'll love this. So this is a novel about Ellie. Ellie is basically really struggling for money. She lives in Portland in Oregon. She is living in this awful rundown apartment. She is working this like dead end job in a coffee shop. She's just feeling very like meh about life, doesn't really know where to go to next. Um, and she is desperate for money. Like she really, really needs money. Like the career that she wanted or like, that she moved to Portland for just didn't pan out. This girl, she needs some money. Um, and it just so happens that her, the landlord of the coffee shop she works in, which is quite convoluted, um, is in a position where he is willing to pay somebody a lot of money if they pretended to be his fiance, to pretend to marry him. So Ellie agrees to it. She's in a desperate situation. She needs the money. She's got nothing to lose. Why not just go for it? Like Andrew seems like a pretty good guy. Like he's not an awful guy. Let's just go along with it for a bit. And Ellie at this point isn't really in a situation where she's looking for romance because she recently had her heart broken when she met this girl and had this like 24 hour whirlwind romance and this girl just ended up leaving. And so she is obsessed with this girl, heartbroken, decides to go along with this. Only of course, it would turn out that the girl that Ellie fell in love with in this 24 hours, Jack, is actually Andrew's sister. Ellie doesn't discover this until she goes to his family cabin up in the mountains to go on a ski holiday with them and lo and behold Jack is there. Jack's angry at Ellie, Ellie's angry at Jack. It's very clear there's been some sort of like miscommunication at some point somewhere but neither of them really knows what's going on with the other. Um, and of course it is like forced proximity, they are stuck in this cabin together and they have these like feelings for each other and things happen. There is spice in this. I don't think the first like spicy scene is until like quite far into the book. Um, it's really well written I thought personally and from it's like from like probably two thirds of the way through the book I'd say the spice starts happening. It's sprinkled in there it's not like really explicit. Somebody's asked for sapphic historical fiction, for example, Seven Husbands and Last Night at the Telegraph Club. And honestly, if you guys have any good recommendations for this, then please let me know because I want recommendations like that. Um, because I actually don't know if I necessarily have anything that fits that. Uh, what have I got? I've literally got books like everywhere. I've got books there, I've got books there, I've got books behind me. So if I'm looking in random directions, I'm just, I'm browsing. Um... Okay, this might be a stretch, but for the sake of answering this, I'm going to pull One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Hear me out on this. So this book is set in the modern day. This is set in, I think it's like 2021 or 2020. Um, August, autumn, I always forget her name, what's her name? August, 
August is 23 years old, she's just moved to New York City, she's got a whole load of trauma in her past which has basically made her very like cynical, very cut off from the world, she just wants to go to New York, do her degree, leave, not make friends, not interested, um, only she ends up moving into like this apartment with all these roommates and falls into this like really lovely friendship group which I think is one of the highlights of this book, um, but it takes a bit of a weird twist when August falls in love with somebody on the subway. She catches the same subway every day to college um, and ends up meeting a girl called Jane. Only Jane, it turns out, can't leave the subway. Like, Jane is stuck on the subway. And I don't want to spoil much for you, so all I'll say is it turns out that Jane isn't from the 2020s. Jane is from the 1970s, which is where I think it kind of fits in with this, but not really. Um, She's from the 1970s, so it just has this really like wonderful intersection of like being queer in the 2020s versus being queer in the 1970s and like interesting discussions around these two queer women who are like leading these very different lives. Um, and it's just got a really interesting historical perspective through that. So this might be a really, really loose connection there, but if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. This is one of those books that I first read it and I was like, okay, that was cute meh, like it was fine, didn't love it as much as Casey McQuiston's other books and then something about it just like took hold of me and now it's a year and a half later and I still think about this book like on the daily. Woman in her 20s still trying to figure her queerness out. Okay, let's go for... We are gonna go for this. This is Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake. We all know how much I love, adore the Bright Fall series. Like this is the second in the series. I don't necessarily think you have to read the first one in the series to understand what's going on here. Um, it's Delilah Green, it doesn't care. Highly recommend it if you do want to read it. Um, but this features Astrid Parker, who is a very high strung, uptight woman who has recently gone through a pretty horrific failed engagement. So this book opens with Astrid very much being like, I'm focusing on myself and my career, not interested in anyone. I'm a straight woman, I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm straight. Um, and then Astrid Parker realises that maybe that's not so true. Um, she gets hired as the lead interior designer on this like DIY homes under the hammer kind of like TV show. And Astrid instantly takes a dislike to the carpenter on the project, Jordan Everwood, and Jordan Everwood being a female. Um, and they like hate each other, but it's like this sexy kind of hatred. Like there's clearly chemistry there, but because Astrid Parker is straight, Astrid doesn't really realize what's going on. And so it takes her a while to figure out that her like intense hatred or these feelings she's having towards Jordan isn't necessarily hatred, like there's actual feelings there. Astrid has never considered the fact that she is anything but straight, like she's always liked men, so in her head she is straight, that is it. Turns out Compet got Astrid real bad, and as the reader you sort of like follow Astrid as she goes through her journey of figuring out her own queerness and her own feelings for Jordan. It's wonderful, it's, yeah, I think it's exactly what you're looking for. Romantic but not super cheesy. I'm gonna have to mention the same ones again, I'm afraid. Delilah Green doesn't care. Astrid Parker doesn't fail. Honestly, I do prefer Delilah Green just because I love the character of Delilah. The character of Astrid can be a bit intense sometimes. But these are so romantic. Like the way that Ashley Herring Blake writes about these romantic relationships is so tender. Like there's no sexualization apart from like the sex scenes, obviously. But it's just like true lesbian, queer, sapphic, whatever it is, love. And it's beautiful. Spicy lesbian, and boy oh boy, do I have a spicy book to recommend to you. Where on earth has it gone? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Mistakes Were Made by Mera Wisner. Now, I personally am not into the whole like MILF thing. Like, it's just not my kind of vibe. I know some lesbians are really into like the older woman. I never really have been. Um, if you are, this book, you will go feral for this. But even if you're not, just the spice in this book is actually a bit overwhelming at times. Like, it's it's a lot. I mean, the tagline for this book is the good news, she likes someone. The bad news, it's her best friend's mum. Is that all I need to say? 
This book opens with, what are their names? Cassie and Erin, Cassie being the college student and Erin being her best friend's mum. Um, they meet in a bar not knowing who the other one is, obviously. And immediately there's like this chemistry between them. In the first like chapter, they are shagging in a car, in a car park. And I'll leave the rest to you. <laughs> a WLW story that doesn't include a closeted character or internalized homophobia, etc. Yes, 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 yes. Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. Grace Porter has been working towards her PhD in astronomy like since before she can remember. Like her whole life has led up to this moment where she gets her PhD in her hands. Like she is a doctor of astronomy. And to celebrate, her and her friends go on a trip to Las Vegas. And when they're there, Grace Porter, who's usually like very reserved, like very strict with herself, doesn't usually let herself get out of hand. She ends up getting so absolutely drunk that she wakes up the next morning having married a random woman in Vegas and the story goes from there. In this book, both Grace and her now wife, Yuki, are just gay. Like there's no sort of coming out storyline, there's no internalized homophobia, there's not really any homophobia from anyone else at all. Like the storyline just is that Grace woke up one morning and she was married and now she needs to figure out the rest of her life. Um, but she just is gay. It's not part of the storyline. It just is who she is. It's just who Yuki is. There's like m mentionings. Mentionings? Wow. Good English. It's good you have a book channel where I speak about books and words and stuff. Um, there's mentions of sort of the queer experience and stuff like that and like moving through the world as a queer person and like the challenges that come with that. But it's not like, that's not the story, if you go know what I mean. Somebody has asked for Twilight, but gay and less creepy. And honestly, I wish I had an answer for you there with Twilight, but gay and less creepy. I have nothing. There's literally nothing I can offer you for that prompt. So if any of you know Twilight, but gay and less creepy, please leave it in the comments. I feel like if you're into like reading the fantasy sort of sapphic stuff, I know there's a lot of sapphic fantasy books, um, you might have something. I'm not a fantasy girly, I've tried. I've tried to get into fantasy, it's just not for me. Maybe one day I'll stick with the real life stuff for now. Something fluffy with a bit of angst. I'm so tired with reading sapphic books with no joy. Um, ooh. It's bad that I can't immediately think of something, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna go for a two for one here. Again, these might be quite like loosely linked to the prompt. We have Not My Problem by Kira Smith. Um, I love this book so much. It is YA, but I don't think that is to its detriment at all. Like I really, really enjoyed this. It didn't read like YA. Um, so this is set in Ireland. You've got your two main characters, Idine and Maeve. Idine is very much a rule breaker. She's the class clown. She just lives to make other people laugh. Maeve is the super ambitious like class nerd. She is the top of every class. She is in all the clubs. And it turns out Maeve is struggling to deal with all of the pressure that she's got on her shoulders. And Maeve and Idine don't exactly like get on. They've always had a lot of rivalry between them. But then one day Maeve comes to Idine and she's like, I need your help. I cannot do all this anymore. I need you to break my leg so I can stop doing my sports because I just need to chill the fuck out. And Maeve kind of reluctantly agrees to go along with it. And this is just fun. It's romantic. It's hilarious. Obviously, they like get feelings for each other, obviously. Um, there is a bit of darkness in this and that Idine's home life isn't all that great. So she is the one who like goes out of her way to make everyone laugh because her home life kind of sucks. So it's dark in that aspect. But like, most of the book is just joy. I love these characters. I love their relationship. I just think it's really cute. And then we have this. This is Never Ever Getting Back Together by Sophie Gonzalez. I will admit this isn't my favourite book I've ever read. I didn't personally love this. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. But I know quite a few people out there did love it. So I'm going to recommend it anyway. Um, this is the story. It's a really good premise for a story, actually. It's two women who go on a kind of like bachelor style reality tv show so basically they've got a mutual ex and he is going on this tv show where they get all of his exes to compete and win him back at the end of it um so the main characters maya and sky both go on this 
reality TV show with their own like reasons for going on it. Neither of them really wants Geordie back, but they they've got their own motivations for going on the TV show. And turns out they are both queer women and they end up falling for each other rather than for Geordie. There is like obviously a bit of angst in this, like it's not completely angst free, but none of the angst is around like being queer in itself. The angst is around the situation they found themselves in in this really tricky situation where they are on reality TV and they've got to sort of hide their relationship for that reason, because they both want to get to the end, um, is really cute and is fun. I do feel like the relationship could have done with a bit more like building up. It kind of just happens out of nowhere, which I found a bit weird. Um, you might love it, you might not. It's, it's cute. Queer books that aren't YA. I feel like I've already mentioned quite a few in this video and I'm not gonna pull them all out because I'm just gonna literally read off wherever I see. Um, Call Me By Your Name by Andrew Asman. There is My Policeman by Bethan Roberts. Sorry Bro by Talene Viscuni. Um, the Bright Fall series I mentioned earlier. What else have I got? Um, the Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. I don't think that counts as YA. It is quite traumatic. Um, Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Um, what else? Honey Girl, like I mentioned before. Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfler. Um, Yerba Buena by Nina LaCour. Seven Husbands, I guess. Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Incredible book. Um, yeah, hopefully that's something to keep you going. Queer mysteries. I wish I had more queer mysteries for you. I find it really hard to find mystery books that have queer main characters, or at least I haven't really come across them yet. So if you have, leave them in the comments. The only one that springs to mind for me is this one, In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I can't really tell you anything about the queer characters in this because it will literally ruin the entire book. So it is quite pivotal to the plot. Um, but the overall storyline in this is the main character is Jessica Miller. Ten years ago she was at university, was graduating university, when one of her friends was mysteriously murdered and the culprit had to be one of the like ten friends in their friendship group. So Jessica is going back to her ten year reunion with the goal of finding out who killed her friend. Um, and from there things happen. It is queer queer characters in this, I'm not going to say anything more than that. Not your typical romance novel, one where the storyline is more than just the relationship. I've got the perfect book for this in Yerba Buena by Nina LaCour. This is the story of two women, Emily and Sarah, and they had completely separate lives, completely separate upbringings. Um, Sarah ran away from home when she was 16. She basically left her entire life behind. She had a really difficult home life. So she runs away and becomes completely independent. She's living in Los Angeles. She builds herself up this amazing career as a bartender. And she basically builds her entire life from scratch. And she is completely on her own. And then on the other side, you've got Emily. And Emily is very, very close with her family. And she's very dependent on her family. Um, and she feels a lot of responsibility for them as well. And she has quite a lot of weight on her shoulders from the fact that her family rely on her so much. And so they are literally from that, you can see just completely separate people. And you sort of like alternate between their chapters where you're sort of following each of them individually. Is it, or is it like actually saying that? It might be like a chunk is Sarah and then a chunk is Emily. I can't remember, I did read this about two years ago now. Um, either way, you find out like the story of both women and their paths like do intersect at certain points and you're sort of like waiting for them to actually come together because obviously you know eventually in this book they are going to come together for good. Um, but it is a story of two completely separate women and they're living their own lives and then the relationship that comes just happens to come very naturally and yeah. Okay, let's just do a couple more. We'll do educational for someone queer but not educated enough. Obviously, it has got to be Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This is a fiction novel about a woman, a teenager called Lily. She is a second generation, or even third generation, Chinese American living in San Francisco in the 1950s in the midst of the Red Scare. 
and she has a lot of responsibility to keep her family safe. Like if Lily steps out of line, like the Chinese community are being watched so carefully by the government and it's drilled into Lily, like you've got to be perfect, otherwise your father could be deported, like you can't draw any attention to us. Only Lily, it turns out, is gay and she is desperately trying to like suppress that side of herself. Um, but then she meets a girl and she can't suppress it anymore. They end up going to a club called the Telegraph Club, which is a queer club. Only, of course, queer clubs were not allowed. They were illegal, so they get raided quite often. And Lily finds herself at one of these clubs as it's being raided. And that is basically the gist of this story. Um, it is so educational. You learn so much. It made me cry so many times. It just feels so real. What I particularly loved about this book is the author's notes at the back. Um, oh, where are they? Where's that? So you've got these author's notes at the back where Melinda Lowe basically talks through all the choices she made in writing this book. Um, so you've got on language where she talks about her effort to use historically accurate language in this book, even if it would be considered maybe offensive nowadays. You've got about the 1950s, about San Francisco, which obviously has always been a hub for queer people, Chinatown and Chinese Americans, lesbians, gender and the community. I just love that she sort of took the extra time to talk about that. If I was ever to write a book myself, which I really want to do, I've got ideas, but I just can't get them down, which is really frustrating. Um, I would want it to be this. If I could write a book, I want it to be this one or something equivalent. On the other hand, if you're looking for something non-fiction, I have a couple of recommendations or maybe even three. I have three recommendations for you. Um, I have And the Band Played On, People, Politics and the AIDS Epidemic by Randy Schiltz. This is one hell of a book. The text in this is so tiny. Like, I will even admit that I haven't read this book properly. Like, I very much, like, picked and chose. Is that... that feels wrong. Wrong grammar. Um, I've basically chosen what excerpts from this I want to read and I've read like big chunks of it but like I don't feel like it's the kind of book you can actually sit through and just like read. Um, maybe I will one day but it's about the AIDS epidemic and it is really heavy physically and metaphorically. Um, then we have Gay Bar by Jeremy Atherton Lynn. Again I will admit I haven't finished this book yet, I've only just started it. It is about queer nightlife and it is so fascinating so far. Um, I'm really excited to like finish this and actually give a full review of it because loving it so far. And then maybe if you want something a little bit easier to digest, we have Queer There and Everywhere, 23 People Who Changed the World by Sarah Prager. This is basically like little synopsises of all these different queer people throughout history. Um, so we have Joan of Arc, we have Alan Turing is in here, we have, who else do we have? Eleanor Roosevelt, Sylvia Rivera, just all these different queer figures and it just tells you a bit about them and their lives. It doesn't go into like loads of detail but it's cute little like synopsises of these people. Let's end on this one. So non-binary characters would be cool, maybe a romantic comedy. I will admit that I don't read loads of books with non-binary or transgender characters, not because I'm a transphobe, I swear, I just I just lean towards sapphic books because that is my experience and that is like, I want to read about my experience in the same way that trans people I'm sure want to read about their experience, but I do want to like actively make more effort to read more books featuring non-binary or trans characters because I know it's important. I just, every time I go to do it, I'm like, you know, I'm going to read about this sappy lesbian couple instead. <laughs> and that's just, that's just who I am. But I do have one recommendation for you in the form of... Loveless by Alice Oseman. Um, this book isn't about a non-binary character, but it features an amazing non-binary character called Sunil, who is like pretty key to this story. Um, Loveless is about Georgia. She is asexual, aromantic. She has basically gone to university and has realised that she is not interested in anyone ever. Like she is never going to be interested in anyone. And it's like a lot for her to like take on and sort of like shed all the expectations she had of what her life was supposed to be. Um, and Sunil is a key character, a key player in Georgia coming to terms with who she is and like feeling comfortable in herself. Um, I love the character of Sunil in this so if you haven't read this I highly recommend. This is like fully a five star read. I loved this book. And I think we will end on that note. If you have any recommendations for any of these prompts then please leave them in the comments down below. Twilight but gay and less creepy. 
if anyone has anything for that, I will be amazed. What a specific prompt. I love it. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if there's any other videos you want to see from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.